Good morning, I'm Dr. Sam Goldhaber from Brigham Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School, and I want to welcome you to Cardiovascular Medicine Update for the Practitioner. Uh, we are very glad to see you. We run this five-day course once every two years, and we go through many different areas of cardiovascular medicine, both in lecture format with Q&A and also with breakout sessions. Cardiovascular medicine is moving so quickly that uh, there are virtually no slides uh, in the syllabus uh, that were there two years ago. That's how quickly the field has moved. Hypertension, compared to everything else you're hearing this week, sounds pretty mundane, I guess. But it's really, if you think about it, probably your bread and butter. It's one of the most common things you encounter uh, in the office, uh, as well as in the hospital. And you've read about this, you're hearing about this, and I'm gonna be talking about renal sympathetic denervation. Now the sympathetic nervous system, the kidneys are closely aligned. The sympathetic nerves feed the kidneys, it contributes to renal uh, vasoconstriction as well as sodium retention. And also, in, uh, the kidneys activate afferent sympathetic nerves, which feed back centrally, and again, increase sympathetic efferent activity. So it's a, it's a two-way street. And you can see from this, uh, this uh, the picture on uh, your left and the hist uh, histologic representation on your right, that around the adventitia of the renal arteries is a, is a network of uh, sympathetic nerves, and, uh, and their, their receptors are located uh, in the uh, renal parenchyma. And there are techniques, which you're familiar with, which can denervate these renal sympathetic nerves. And it's putting in a, a catheter that's capable of radiofrequency ablation within the renal artery, advancing it. It circles a little bit. And just like in uh, electrophysiologic procedures, it can ablate the renal nerves without really damaging the renal arteries. And there's been a number of studies from a number of manufacturers Looking at uh, sympathetic denervation, I'll show you uh, this one. This is the uh, Simplicity Hypertension series of studies. This is Simplicity Hypertension 2. This is the six-month follow-up of patients who underwent uh, renal denervation compared to control. And on your left, you'll see the, uh, the benefits in, in terms of reduction in systolic and diastolic blood pressure six months after renal denervation compared to a control group, which is on your right, which had no change. And the long-term follow-up, and by long-term I mean one year, uh, on the left-hand side is similar to the six-month results that you saw, but at six months, those who got the sham procedure or didn't get a procedure were able to cross over to uh, sympathetic denervation. And once they did that, and then everyone comes back at 12 months, uh, they also realize a, a considerable decrease in their systolic and diastolic pressure. And ongoing now is Simplicity uh, HTN3. Uh, this trial is in uh, progress. I, I could tell you that uh, Dr. Bott is the uh, principal investigator of this multicenter trial. It's going to enroll 530 patients uh, who have uncontrolled hypertension. Uh, enrollment is near completion. They're randomized to uh, uh, renal sympathetic denervation versus a sham procedure, and the primary endpoint is the change in systolic blood pressure in the office at uh, six months. It's a promising technique. It's too soon to be advocating it, but it's a very exciting area of research, which will not only inform our understanding of the pathophysiology of hypertension, but may uh, yield a very effective uh, therapy for our patients with resistant hypertension. That I'll conclude, and thank you for your attention. Well, that's a whirlwind of information to get through. And it's obvious from your talk that most patients are going to end up on two or more blood pressure meds. What are your thoughts about using combo medication? And how early into the treatment of a new patient should we, if at all, be prescribing combo medication? By combo, I mean two different medications, perhaps a diuretic plus a calcium channel okay. blocker. All right. 
Uh, very important question, and I, as, as I implied, I think you, you do it fairly early on. I don't think we need to be waiting a long time to see a pharmacologic effect in our patients with high blood pressure. I mean, the, you usually achieve a therapeutic level within uh, five half-lives of the drug, right, five doses. So within a week, you should be seeing an effect. I typically uh, instruct my patients to acquire a blood pressure device, monitor their blood pressure at home, call me or email me and let me know what their blood pressure is doing. And I move fairly quickly to either advancing a drug that I'd started to a maximally tolerated dose or adding another drug and then over time increasing the doses of each. But I don't wait long. I would like to get them to target as soon as possible.